our second day of half pads. Tomorrow we'll be able to put on full pads, put pants on and everything for our last day of acclimatization. And uh, uh, you can tell the guys had a really good summer. Uh, Coach Dawson and his staff did a phenomenal job getting the guys in really good shape, really good condition. And, and then uh, hats off to our leaders uh, for, for setting the tone throughout the summer in, in their captain's practices. Uh, I think we've really made you know, great strides from the end of spring practice 13-14 uh, to the first four practices now. Uh, you can tell there's a lot of great retention with the guys and, and uh, they're willing to learn and know that uh, uh, they've got a long ways to go, but we like the progress that they've made so far. So uh, we're early on in fall camp and so we'll open up for questions. Well, it's, it's so early, but uh, we're excited about all the young kids that we brought in. Uh, all of them are really good football players. Uh, we haven't had any uh, contact periods or anything yet, but their, their athleticism, all the freshmen, their athleticism is really good. Uh, they're going to be really good players. Some of them will have to be really good players this year. Other ones we, we can redshirt. We're not even close to being able to determine uh, where that will be. And then uh, uh, impressed with Wade James and Harry um, and Tyler came back throughout the, the summer, having a great summer, and, and uh, uh, know our offense better. And then Jordan Brown you know, just didn't get here till after the 4th of July, but uh, you can tell he's played an awful lot of football uh, at North Carolina because uh, the game uh, has already slowed for him. And, and so excited to see what he's going to do over the next three weeks. Yeah, for Jordan in particular, just how far behind is he from that? Standpoint? Well, you're always going to be behind. You miss the whole spring, uh, some of the summer, but in the same respect, uh, you know, football's football, and, and a lot of the things they were doing at his previous institution we're doing here. It's just learning the terminology, but uh, he's a sharp kid. He's a quick learner. Uh, I haven't seen him, you know, in early practices make any mental errors, and he asks questions. A wonderful person to be around, and uh, I'm excited to see what he can do. One more running back question for you. What, what are your plans with Jacardi and Wright? Where does he fit into everything? He's coming in as a running back right now, and uh, he was a tremendous running back in high school. And uh, we'll see where it shakes out throughout fall camp. You know, we, we have a lot of good young players there, and, and uh, we want to give them all an opportunity to be running backs. And, and I think they all have a skill set to do that. And uh, Jacardi is a big physical guy that can really run, and um, you know, probably behind just because he missed a lot of the summer stuff uh, being back home. But uh, uh, he understands the game of football, and, and we'll see where he goes throughout these next three weeks as well. And then at quarterback, um, the guys behind Skyler kind of caught your eye. You know, it, it's we're giving them all pretty equal equal reps right now. I think uh, Nick and John are, are taking the the most of those reps with the twos, um, and both doing some really good things. You can tell they both had good summers uh, physically as well as mentally, and and then uh, obviously Jaron. Uh, being here in the spring really helped him. Uh, and then Chris Heron's brand new and, and just learning on the run. But uh, it'll be an ongoing process. We want to continue to, to, to push Nick and continue to push John uh, to see who ultimately wins that backup job. Just in terms of defensive backs, you know, kind of the spring, there's a lot of uh, back and forth. You know, this guy might be nickel, he might be corner. Do you have clarity on, on a lot of those types of guys? Yeah, we don't have clarity on it yet. Um, J Mac's a good example. I'm just learning, you know, because we missed all the spring, so I'm trying to figure out uh, what his skill set is. And um, we know he's an inside guy, whether he's a safety or a nickel. Um, we've kept Walt outside right now at corner. Doesn't mean he can't come back to nickel. Uh, he's a real sharp guy, but uh, we just wanted him to focus in at corner right now, and we'll see how that plays out. And uh, you know, we've kept Denzel at free and we've kept Wayne at the strong safety. That was the change that we made, I think, about practice 12 or 13. And, and both those two guys, with all the reps they had in the summer, have settled into those two positions. So I see those guys staying, staying put. But uh, whether it's Jonathan Alexander, um, J Mac, those are the guys that we have to find what their best position is. Well, it was great to have uh, both Easton and Darius down here. They, they came and spent a few days um, with us as coaches, and, and we were out doing stuff. And uh, I think uh, Easton and Skyler 
hooked up, got together, and, and um, just visited probably. You know, I, I don't know. I was never in on those things, and that was great. We couldn't be anyway as, as coaches. Uh, but uh, uh, that's good for Skyler to have somebody to bounce things off of that's been through the system. And so whether or not they've texted or, or met whatever they've done, I think it's great to have somebody that, that really knew our system really well in Easton that had done it for five years at a high level. Um, I know that uh, Skyler appreciates uh, any conversation he does get with Easton. And where's Skyler at right now? I know he's only been four or five. Yeah, he's playing really well. He's, he's playing with so much more confidence. Um, and um, I knew he would because I just saw how much of a jump he made from practice five and six to pra probably practice 13 in the spring. And then uh, just saw his work ethic in the summertime uh, of how much film he watched on his own and uh, how much he was up here trying to continue to learn more about uh, our system. And um, I can see in the first four practices, he's got a great grasp of things. He's already checking things at the line of scrimmage, which he wouldn't even have thought about doing until late in the spring. Now he feels really comfortable and, and uh, just signals and, and being on the right page with the wide receivers and tight ends has, uh, has been uh, really neat to see uh, how much his growth has been. And now, and that's just in four days, I'm really hoping it and I'm, counting on there being really substantial growth here in the next three weeks. Have you seen anything in terms of locked down corners or guys that just have that on film or guys that have that instinct in terms of man-to-man -man coverage? Um, you know, I think A.J. can be. Um, and um, we, you know, we'll put him in some of those positions, but that's, uh, you know, we're still, once again, we're still learning the system with those guys. and, and um, um, we've, we've got to do both. We've got to be able to play zone. We've got to be able to play man. Um, and so, for, you know, just to say you're going to lock somebody down, I mean, that's not the nature of, of what we're going to do defensively. Um, you know, as a, as a whole, we'll have to do it at times. But uh, we're looking for the total package there at corner right now, a guy that can play zone, the guy that can play man, a guy that can tackle. Um, and, and the biggest thing we, we have to do a good job of it at the corner position is to be able to communicate and be able to see things pre-snap and be able to, to understand what the offense is trying to do um, just based on the formation, splits, those things. Well, it's it's excitement for, for me because, um, you know, I, this is the first year that uh, I didn't know what to expect come August, you know. Having a system and having guys in place year after year, you knew uh, the, the, the progress they were making over summertime and you kind of knew what to expect in the fall uh, based on a kid being in the program one year, two years, three years, four and five years. Uh, for us, we've got a lot of older kids, a lot of upperclassmen, but only having 15 practices with those guys, I wasn't sure what to expect coming into. I think all of us coaches weren't sure what to expect as we started the first four practices. Were we going to regress and, and maybe not start from scratch, but start from practice five or six in the spring, as opposed to hopefully continuing on from practice 13, 14 and enroll? And, and that's, that's what we've done. And so as, co as a coaching staff, we're really excited and really pleased because we've put so many things in installation offensively and defensively that were day six, day eight, day nine in the spring or already in day, day two and day three. So that tells me the guys work their tails off mentally uh, in the summertime so that they could be ahead. And so, um, you know, we're, now we've got to get those young guys, those guys maybe that, that are new to the program or didn't practice very much in the spring up to speed. But uh, I'm really pleased and excited about uh, uh, the progress we're going to make this month. I noticed that Chris Heron at practice today was working a little bit with the receivers. What, what's the plan for him going forward? Well, we want to see him as a quarterback. That's what he is first and foremost is to be a quarterback. Uh, I really appreciate Chris because um, you know, we have five quarterbacks out there and he wants repetitions and uh, wide receiver is always a, a spot that you get thin in fall camp. And so he's come to Coach Klein and said, hey, I, I'll, I'll take some reps at wide receiver. I just want to be out there. 
The other thing I think it does is it allows him to really learn the system a little bit more um, by playing quarterback and then moving outside to wide receiver. You, you just The more you can grasp, the more things that uh, – uh, I think he's going to feel comfortable with. I, I still see him as a quarterback this year, and then we'll decide where he's at. I mean, it's it's unfair to evaluate him as a quarterback. Uh, even throughout fall camp, we'll be evaluating daily, but after four practices, it's, boy, it's really foreign to him right now. But uh, I, he's a great athlete. I know that. He's a phenomenal athlete, and Coach Dawson would tell you he was – um, you know, one of the top athletes we brought in this year just through his testing and stuff. So uh, we have to find the best spot for Chris, and you'd like to keep him at quarterback, but let's see what happens. I was going to ask about the linebacker depth. How, do you, how comfortable do you feel right now with that group? Well, I was real pleased with how Eli and Daquan came back um, and uh, worked hard this summer. And, and they, uh, you know, Eli, we just moved from the wheelbacker to the mic position after J-Ball got hurt. And so, uh, I, I can see the, the, the leaps that Eli's made and his comfort level and his communication skills. Um, and then uh, Daniel Green, uh, Cody Fletcher are, are in the mix as well. We're trying to develop another one, um, whoever that may be, trying to find a fifth. Um, and a number of guys are, are battling for that. But, uh, you know, we're, we're always going to be a little thin there, you know, just losing Justin Hughes as late as we did, and, and we didn't have a, a big class of linebackers coming in. So um, we're, that'll be an ongoing process to try to find more guys that can help us there. Staying with the linebackers and Justin's injury, number one, how did they, or how did they come back, I guess, emotionally with that? I mean, have they kind of started to rally around that? Yeah, I, I think the fact that uh, those guys were on their own throughout the summer with their captain's practices, and, um, you know, it was Good because Justin was out there with those guys during their captain's practices and he was able to help coach a little bit with us not being out there. Uh, I think that uh, Eli especially felt more and more comfortable being able to ask Justin all the questions that, that Justin knows the game so well. Uh, and so, you know, yeah, they've settled in. You know, it's, it's too bad, obviously, that, he, that he's going to lose this year. It's great that he's going to get the year back, but um, um, I think they've settled in on it. Um, you know, I, I just we're just trying to find and identify the guys that uh, fit our system uh, well. And uh, Keenan and Jax both fit what we're doing really well. Keenan has a, a really good wide receiver, whether we can play him inside or outside. And then Jax is a fullback within our offense. I think it fits. It doesn't matter who we're really going against in recruiting. I, I don't look at it that way. I look at it more of find the individual player and, and see – uh, where he fits within your system, and if he fits within your system, I really don't care who's recruiting him. If he fits within the system, um, we've got to try to go after that young man. Brady Walker sitting out today, practice. He uh, turned an ankle during the last week of summer conditioning, so we anticipate him being out for about a week um, and already progressing pretty well, doing some things on the side. I would assume Reggie would uh, probably practice next week, and, and so he's behind a, a little bit, but once again, there's a fifth-year guy that's played an awful lot of football, so he'll be all right. And going back to Nick, a quarterback, what's just impressed you most about what he's done? Uh, just how smart he is and um, the fact that Nick understands the system and works hard at it. Uh, the players really trust him. Uh, the players uh, know that he's going to get them in the right call and uh, he's going to execute at a high level. Uh, and I, I think athletically he's done a really nice job of, of making some plays with his feet and making some plays and keeping things alive. And he's a big, strong uh, player. And so um, I just I, I really appreciated seeing him grow from early in the spring to how he finished because he finished spring ball really well. And he's kind of taken it right off the bat and started really well this fall camp. So we'll see how he does. It's just, you know, it's the situational things that, that I've got to see out of Nick and I've got to see out of John, you know, the red zone stuff, the third down periods, the two-minute things that uh, uh, will probably separate those two. Uh, back in the spring, uh, when he first moved there, you called the, the DJ render move uh, an experiment. Yep. I saw he was there again today. He yep. made that decision. He's going to stay. So he's he's going to stay there, um, and uh, he's behind, obviously, mentally, just not playing defense for a while. Uh, DJ's 
needs to find a way to get on the get on the bus and get on the field through special teams. And so, um, you know, with all the defensive special teams that uh, you know, with punt and and kickoff and different things, we we just got to continue to get him to understand defensive football more. And uh, once he maybe can help us on teams, we'll see how that translates to him helping us up, helping us on defense. And, and then one other potential just position things. I know back on signing day I asked you about Clyde Price, maybe where he would play because he also was a talented linebacker. Yep. With the numbers, you mentioned the lack of depth there. Is there any chance that he would play linebacker? Well, once, probably not this first year. Um, because he is a talented running back, you know. Now, if Coach Hayes is in here, if Scotty's in here, Scotty's foaming at the mouth. He'd take Jacardier, he'll take Clyde, he'd take a lot of those guys. Um, but they were brought in here as running backs, and, and we want to make sure that we solidify that position and try to make sure that we have the ability to play two and three at one time. Plus, you know, we're going to lose two seniors out of this class um, with the two grad transfers. And so, um, you know, they're both really good athletes, all those running backs, and that's what we tried to do. Uh, you could take Thomas Grayson, you could take Joe Urban. They're good enough to play somewhere, and that's what we're excited about is they're not one-dimensional. And so we'll just see how it plays out, but all those guys are truly running backs right now. You mentioned earlier Walt Camille moving out to corner. What's the nickel back spot look like right now, and, and when discuss that corner depth? Well, Jonathan Durham's running with the ones right now at nickel. We've tried Jonathan Alexander there. Uh, we're going to try McPherson there. I know Walt can play in there. We played Ross Elder in there. We're just trying to keep moving guys around and see if we can find that niche. Um, and so that'll be ongoing. Uh, at, at the corner position, we like A.J. Uh, exceptionally well. He's, he's a really smart kid that's uh, played a lot of football here. And then Walt would play opposite of him right now. And we're trying to develop another guy, whether that's, uh, you know, whether that's Kiwi, whether that's D-Pat, um, whether it's Echo, there's a number of guys, Lance Robinson, that, that are doing some good things, but we need to continue to get those guys repetition so that um, they feel comfortable within the structure of the defense. We feel comfortable, and once that happens, yeah, we could maybe, uh, it would maybe allow Walt to be interchangeable with corner and nickel, but uh, um, right now, we just wanted to lock him into one spot. I know he played nickel in the spring. Lock him into one spot in the fall, and then uh, if we have to move him over or we can, we, we potentially could. Coach, you talked about that wide receiver group a little bit. When you look at guys like Malik and Raheem who have a little bit of experience versus Silver and Green, what are you looking for out of them this fall camp to show that they're ready to assume a larger role opposite the offense? Yeah, I'd say the biggest thing is consistency. You know, not in consistency in, in their alignment, assistance, consistency in, in the, the depths of their routes and coming in and out of breaks and catching the ball is, is an obvious thing. But do they understand when Skyler checks a play of, the, of making sure that they understand, hey, this is the route I've got to run and I've got to run a precise route. And I've been impressed with Joaquin, like I told you guys in the spring. I, I've been excited about Malik. He missed some time in the spring. Sebastian Taylor's really done a nice job through three or four practices, a big guy that can go catch the football. Um, Landry Weber's doing a really nice job early on. Seth Porter's doing a nice job early on. Um, Josh Youngblood's a kid that uh, he just he just makes a splash play. Doesn't know what he's doing right now, but makes splash plays, and uh, will probably be in the mix somewhere as well. And and that's the other thing is we have to find between those guys, between the depth, hopefully that we have it running back. Maybe we can flex some of those guys out as well and just try to create some matchup problems. But uh, it'll be an ongoing deal with our wide receivers uh, because of the lack of experience, with the exception of Dalton. Now, Coach, you talk about, we've talked about newness within the program, and um, it's awesome news for us with seven or eight new opportunities during fall camp that you haven't heard of. Um, what's, what's the, I don't even know what you guys are even talking about. <laughs> <laughs> what's the thought process? Walk, walk, us, walk us through that and just your philosophy with, with those types of things. Well, when Kenny tells me there's a media obligation, then we run the media obligation is what kind of what and he's in charge of the thing right now. Um, I, I, I honestly, I don't pay a whole lot of attention to it. I really don't. Um, he told me a bunch of you guys are out there today. I, I didn't have any idea. Um, we, we, there's so many things we have to do. And there's so much work we have to do and get done that I'm kind of oblivious to a lot of it. I know that's probably bad to say, but I, I'm just 
focusing in on, on what we need to do every day to try to get the team the team better and and uh, um, if if meeting with you guys and stuff it helps you I, it's just what I've done in the past and I'm, I'm comfortable with that and and uh, you'll know sometimes if I don't want to talk about something I'll say hey I just don't want to talk about it too Oh, it's steep. There's no question about it. I mean, we, we want to make sure that he's not just one position player. We don't want to say, hey, you're only a slot player, Josh. Um, we need him to learn a multitude of positions at the wide receiver position so we can slide him and move him around. He has good size and good speed. He's 195 pounds, which uh, uh, is pretty good size for a wide receiver. He has really good hands. He finishes plays. He finishes practice. You, you, we kick the ball to him, and he's on a scout team kick return, and he takes the thing 80 yards. He's running as fast as he can. He has that innate motor that doesn't stop. You have those type of kids. You find ways to keep force feeding those guys so that you can see how much they can retain and wh whether he'll be a part of uh, everything uh, in our package week one, week four, week six, I don't know. If he can learn it, he'll be a part of it quicker. And uh, that's the challenge. And I know it's foreign to him right now, but it's cool because you've got guys like Dalton Schoen and Joaquin and Skyler helping him out because they see what a lot of us as coaches see. There's a pretty special talent there. Well, we do interior for sure. You know, we, we're playing a bunch of guys inside there. You know, Trey Deshaun, Joe Davies are in there. Uh, Mitty's doing a really good job. Wiley's doing a good job. Huggins is doing a good we, we have enough bodies in there. We're just kind of rotating guys there. A defensive end with Reggie uh, being nicked up uh, and um, uh, Massey being just nicked up. Who maybe he'll probably be back in the next couple of days, but he missed today. The guy that I'm excited about, everybody's excited about Wyatt. He's in, uh, no brainer, but uh, Kyle Ball. You know, I didn't see Kyle uh, in the spring, and I told him about it. I said, shoot, Kyle, I'm excited to watch you run around and play. And the guy that's exceptionally strong, um, gets off the football well, really hard to sustain blocks on him, and plays the game the right way with an unbelievable motor. I think Kyle uh, is uh, going to be in for a terrific year. And then uh, uh, with depth, Spencer Trussell's done a nice job. Um, He's, he's got a really good quick twitch, really good pass rush ability. And then we're moving Eric Gallon around. Um, Gallon's been a, a linebacker for us. We're, we're sliding him in and out of fronts. We're playing him at linebacker. We're playing him at a little bit of defensive end because he, he's a, a senior that wants to help the football team. And he's got a skill set that um, we think he can utilize some things at defensive end. So we'll try him there as well. Anybody new on the offensive line you think has been You know, Evan Curl's done a really nice job. Been excited about Evan. Um, Noah Johnson done some good things playing center and guard. Uh, you know, we, we're just continuing to try to, to find the depth, especially at the tackle position. You know, um, Duffy's done a nice job. Christian has a, as, a, as another tackle, but he's a young player. We're trying to develop 8, 9, and 10 there, um, and uh, that'll be ongoing. But uh, I, I like the way they're working. Yeah, you always do. You, you know, you're always trying to think a step ahead. Um, we know the spots that were thin. I've been a part of it where I knew the spots that were thin at, at North Dakota State as well. And you always just try to think a step ahead of what guys can can help you. Um, and uh, you, you know, you're always looking for the the splash players that you find a spot for and. See if they can help you. Maybe it's in a third down package, uh, maybe offensively or defensively. Um, maybe there's a specific skill set that, you know, an Eric Gallon, maybe he can help us on third down, maybe he can help us in a pass rush situation. But, uh, you know, we're always trying to create depth. This is a long season. It's a marathon, not a sprint. And so we have to continue. Even these young kids that don't have any idea what they're doing right now. A kid that's really shown up to me that I'm excited about is Cooper Beebe. Now, is Cooper probably going to play for us as a true freshman? Probably not, 
but I like what Cooper's doing. He gets the game. He plays fast. He plays hard. Uh, that those are the type of kids that hey, you're developing. Maybe there's a four-game rule, and Cooper's got to help us. Well, he's he's progressing well enough and wanting to learn. And you get the guys like, you know, Holtorf and Franz and stuff that are helping the kid. Those are the ones that that are going to potentially give us a give us a game somewhere along the line. Of course, that's what I was going to ask about about the four-game rule. Mm -hmm. Are you in a position to, to like it or not like it? I love it. I, I love it. Um, you know, I, I think we played eight or eight to ten last year, um, and uh, it, it allows maybe a kid that's on every special team and starting on defense, you get a blow somewhere, and you and you play a young man. The thing that um, you got to be conscious of, and, and I think everybody learned from it last year, is one play equals one game, and um, so you want to make sure that uh, you have something of a package together for somebody, or you're going to play him on multiple teams. Um, so that uh, you know you, you utilize those games effectively, and it doesn't matter. You you may be thin in week three, you may be thin in week eight. Well, you want to make sure and, and spread those around if you can. And um, I, I think it keeps the the young players engaged because as they continue to progress, you never know when your opportunity is going to come. And if you keep doing things well on scout team, keep progressing, we're gonna we're gonna see what you can do because I want to have those guys have that feeling of, of, of playing in a Big 12 game uh, and still retaining their eligibility. At tight end, you seemed, I'm sure, in Arlington about how quickly Nick Lenners could get back up to speed. For a few He's done really well in the first four practices. I, I don't see him, um, you know, being limited at all. Uh, he's cut it loose, and so I'm excited for Nick. Yeah, he, he just didn't make it. It's just not not part of the team right now. No. Nope.